Hello everyone, George here, and it's time for us to begin actually creating our genetic algorithm project. You can see I've already completed it right here, but we're gonna start fresh with a new one, so let's go to new. Ah, let's just call it something slightly different. How about bunny population? Something fun for YouTube. Okay, hit create project. All right, we've got our new project open in Unity 5. Point, uh, which version are we using? 5.5, I believe. In case you're following along, we do not need any services for our bunny project. What we do need to do is, uh, this is gonna be, I think, a two-part series. This first one, we're gonna tackle probably the easier parts, and that is creating a class called Bunny, which is gonna represent, uh, well, a, a rabbit, and it breeding, and basically uh, holding color information, a uh, fitness score, and a material. And we're also gonna create in this video the environment, which is going to be a, a simple plane that will roll through different colors over time. And in the subsequent video, the one after this, we're gonna talk about the actual population features, where we go in there and we start breeding things, culling things, and mutating things in order to make them more fit for their particular environment. So let's begin really easily with uh, our bunny class. So down here in assets, this is a simple project where we don't really need to spend any time uh, managing files and folders and so forth. We're just gonna create them, create a new behavior script. Remember, we're using C Sharp in all of my video lessons. Let's go to bunny. Double click Bunny to open up Visual Studio or Mono Develop. Now our Bunny is gonna be represented by a capsule object. So let's go ahead and create some. So let's go to Game Object, Create 3D Object, and Capsule. There we are, at the origin, perfect. Let's go ahead and grab Visual Studio on over here. Well, that's a little bit large, probably even for you. Okay, so Bunny inherits from Mono Behavior, that's all good. Like I said, Bunny is gonna encapsulate uh, two things really. It, it needs to have a fitness score that gets held. And this score is how closely it resembles in a numeric fashion its environment. That might sound strange because we're comparing colors to colors, but I'm actually going to take those colors and treat them like vectors. First, I'm gonna take the difference between the colors and then grab the magnitude of that difference, which is how big a difference it actually is, which is a single floating point value. And that becomes my fitness score. The smaller my fitness score in this case, the better the bunny represents the color of the environment and will continue to uh, hopefully survive and breed and, and go on in its life. So let's create a public, and I'm gonna make these public. You can make them you know, protected or private and add access or methods if you want to, uh, but we're gonna be accessing these things so often that really it doesn't matter in our case, and this is just an example. Next, we're gonna do the actual color. I'm gonna store the color as well just because we might wanna do some cool stuff in the future. I'm actually not done with this project. I have to uh, submit, well, not submit this, but this is a demonstration for my lecture. And I'm probably going to uh, use coroutines to actually stop the simulation and indicate exactly which bunnies are fit and which ones are not fit. Next thing though is we are going to be constantly using the material attached to this thing. We're going to be changing it all the time. So we're going to want to make sure we grab that material right at the get-go. So instead of uh, start here, I'm actually going to use awake just so I'm right at the very beginning, the earliest part I can have for initialization even before this object is actually uh, you know, activated. We're going to do material is going to be equal to game object dot get component and we're going to grab the renderer 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 where are you renderer there you are and parentheses and dot material wonderful so now we have that material stored away we actually aren't going to be updating our bunnies in any way that might sound odd why wouldn't the bunnies have like a breed function or something but i'm going to handle all that in the following video where we deal with a class called population which is basically a giant manager by the way if you want to make this more interesting you should go online and try to find i think it's what the stanford bunny 3d model and replace the capsule with that instead that way it really looks like a bunny rabbit instead of just you know a floating pill. Okay, we are gonna have one method in this class that we're gonna work with, and that's gonna be public void set color. And this is going to handle, well, setting our color so we don't have to do it externally. So let's take in a color value, and let's do this dot color is going to be equal to color. This, of course, referring to this instance, color referring to what gets passed in. That's how those are different, in case you're still new to programming. Material dot color, 
which is the actual color of our material, which is what gets shown on the screen. Uh, it gets pushed into our shader, and our shader uses that to actually draw the proper color when uh, the fragment shader most likely gets evaluated. Okay, and that's it for the bunny class. Really simple, really straightforward. Let's jump back in here now. Here's our capsule. Let's grab our bunny and add it to it. Wonderful, now we have that script attached. All right, so why don't we grab our capsule, and I'm gonna name this Bunny instead, something more interesting. And I'm gonna grab and drag him down to my assets so that now I have a prefab for my Bunny. Yay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the Bunny Rabbit now. We don't need him around anymore. And let's save our scene so that we don't lose anything. So here we are, scenes, and let's just call this Bunny Breeding. Bunny Breeding Part 1. There we go. Okay, so now let's begin working on the next part, which is the environment for our object. Let's go ahead and create a new script. Come over here, right click, create C Sharp script, and let's call it environment. That's how I remember how to spell it, by pronouncing it wrong. So this script is gonna be slightly more complicated, which is why we did bunny first. This script is going to hold the current color of our environment. And then it's going to have a function called cycle colors. This is actually going to be a uh, coroutine that will continue to run forever until we stop things. And it will find a new color and then slowly transition between our previous color and the new color by treating them as vectors rather than just colors. We're not even going to need an update function because we're going to have a coroutine handle everything for us. But one thing we are going to need right off the bat is once again material environment meant material we're going to grab that in start and we're going to use that material to set its color so that we have well you know something actually changing so let's do environment material is equal to game object dot get component same thing as last time we're going to grab that renderer again renderer there you go and dot material wonderful we are going to start a coroutine next but we haven't created it yet so why don't we do that first so i don't confuse the hell out of everyone so hey how do you how do we create a coroutine well first of course our return type has to be an i enumerator there we go and it's going to be called cycle colors and this is going to have a while loop in it that well goes forever or until we stop playing so let's do while true you could make a gui button or something that makes this thing disabled or starts it back up i'm just going to have it continually cycle forever now the first thing i need to know is what my previous color actually was so i'm going to create a vector three and call this previous color and that's going to be equal to a new vector three and it's going to take in the actual color value of our environmental material so the idea is we just started this function. We need to know what color we currently are. At the moment we're white, but we could have made that any color we want to. Actually, we don't even have our plane yet, do we? Let's jump into Unity really quick and create that for us. So clicking on game object and 3D object, let's create a new plane. There we are. Let's F2 that so that we can edit its name easily and call that environment environment so now we have this vector we have already grabbed our material up here which makes this easy for us because we can just do environment material material dot color dot r and then let's skip to the next line and copy and paste this over and over again because i'm lazy and yes we will be changing that in just a second from r to g to b and b so now we have a vector object holding our RGB values, and that's gonna make it really easy for us to do things like subtraction and other operations. Next up, we need our current color and we need our previous color. So we're gonna do a new vector three and it's gonna be called our current color. And right now, since we're just starting out, we're gonna set that equal to our previous color. Remember, we haven't entered our while loop yet. We're just setting up variables. So right now, our previous color and our current color are the same thing. We're gonna do a float color transition time and this could be public variable or your serialized field variable you put up here so that you could edit this within the editor in unity if you wanted to but i'm just going to put it right in here and i'm going to say i want this color to roll around every five seconds so 5.0 f now we deal with the real loop this is the thing that keeps happening over and over and over again and that requires us to call a yield return null uh, to indicate that we want to move to the next frame and then do the loop again 
So the first thing we need to do is we need a new color, right? We don't have a new color. We've got the previous color and our current color is our, still our previous color. So let's grab a new color. So let's do vector three, new color. And this is the color we're striving to become. Not the one we actually are and not the one we were, but the one that we've, we're gonna randomly find and use. How do we randomly find stuff in Unity? Well, if you're not careful and you just use random, you might confuse random in uh, C Sharp land with Unity land. So I always like to preface it with Unity engine, engine.random.range. And that range is going to be a value between 0.0, .0 and 1.0F. Why is it that range and not 0 to 256 or uh, 0 to 255? Because Unity likes to use floating point numbers, so we're going to work with that system. We now have a new color we're striving for, built from randomness, so for, for from a random 0 to 1 value for its R, G, and B values right there. Next up, let's make sure we don't screw things up. Let's do a debug.log. And inside of that, let's just say, I got a new color. Basically just making sure our loop is actually functioning. If you wanted to, you could print that color out. I'm not going to bother. This is just to keep me from messing things up, which I'm pretty good at. Okay, now that we've done that, we actually need to calculate the difference between our current color and our new color based upon our transition time. What do we typically call a difference between two things in variable world? I like to call it delta. So I'm gonna create a delta color. Delta color is gonna be equal to, well, what do you think? It's gonna be our new color, which is the one we just found, minus our previous color. And it's gonna be times 1.0, or divided by, I'm, I'm flipping things a little bit, color transition time. So what does this do? Well, this gives us how much the color should change given a unit of time. So we're going to use time dot delta time basically in our loop to determine how much we should be changing from one color to the next. Really what we're doing is we have now um, color over time. And when we multiply color over time by time, the times cross out and then we just have an amount of color we're supposed to be changing by. Now we get to the fun part, another while loop, right? So what is this while loop going to do? This one is going to continue to iterate until we get close enough to that color. How do we get close to that color? How do we know we're close to that color? We're going to use the magnitude of the difference of our new, new color and our current color. So let's do new color minus our current color dot magnitude. Because remember, that's going to return a vector that basically points from our current color to our new color. And then we're going to get the magnitude of that, which is the size of it. And then after that, we are going to check it to see if it's greater than some value. I'm gonna say, if it's, if it's you know, if the difference between our new color and our current color is less than 0 0.1, uh, that's good enough for me. You can make that arbitrarily larger or smaller. It really depends on your preference. Now let's do now our current color is equal to our current color plus delta color. So what we're doing is we're gonna be slowly changing our current color bit by bit as time goes by. And the amount that we change it by is, of course, our delta color times the amount of time that has passed. Remember, your update loop is not um, set in stone as to when it occurs. So you need to take into consideration how much time has passed. Otherwise, you're going to have your colors changing at odd intervals. And now that we've figured out what our new col current color is, we get to convert this over to a normal color object and set our environmental materials color to that. So let's do environment material dot color is equal to a new color and that's just going to be our current color dot x y and z dot z great and just to make things easy because people like to pause videos we'll push this all over there and put that right there as well okay and now the most important thing, because we are dealing with a coroutine and enumeration basically, or an I enumerator, we need to use the yield statement. So yield, return null. And by passing in null, it basically means we're going to pause execution of this particular method, and then we're going to start up again on the next frame. And that means we're still in this while loop. The while loop is going to get evaluated. If we're not yet big enough, 
or I should say if we're not yet small enough, we're going to do this again and change our color bit by bit over and over forever. When we do get close enough to that color, we want to store that. So we're gonna make our previous color equal to our new color. And the whole thing's gonna start again, right? Because we have this second while loop that goes on forever. So all we're doing is continually grabbing a new color that we want to be, and then we're slowly over every frame changing our color to be that color. And then when we're all done, we're storing what we were away in our previous color so that we can grab a new color and start moving towards that one as well. So with that, why don't we save it on off, come back over here, and for our environment, let's make sure we actually have our script attached. There we are, and let's hit run. You might have noticed nothing happened, and this is the easiest mistake to make. You actually need to call your coroutine. It's not magic, right? And the way we call our uh, coroutine here is by using start coroutine, and we can do it two ways. We can either call the method actually, or we can use uh, a string to denote it. I'm gonna use the string version this time, so I'll use cycle colors, the name of the actual method. There we are. And let's jump back into Unity, and hopefully we're gonna find something a little bit more interesting going on. And here you can see it's, well, it's very slowly transitioning between colors. Let's, let's increase that so you're not waiting for this to happen. Let's make it so that it transitions every one second. So these are gonna be some very, very, very fast color changes. There we go, so green to blue to purple, purple, pink, purple, blue, and so forth and so on. But anyway, so what we've done in this video is we set up our environment and we've set up our bunny rabbits. And in the subsequent video, we're going to be taking all of this. By the way, all I'm doing now is taking that and making a prefab out of it. You don't really have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, one last thing we should do is we should get rid of this debug log statement. We ended up not having any problems, so we don't really need it. And it's just printing useless information out to our console. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video in the series. Next time, we are going to be messing with the population and basically completing the series and making it so that capsules pop up all over the place and slowly uh, go through their whole breeding process and, and re removal process and fitness score evaluation to, to make them more like the environment they're within. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. If you didn't, don't just dislike. Give me a comment on why. And if you want to see more material like this, please remember to subscribe. See you all next time. George out. Bye.